Good day, everyone. This is John Scarborough. I'll try to keep this short and sweet. Uh, if I can, I'm, what I wanted to talk about today was um, army worms and maybe touch on some uh, uh, grasshoppers and things of that nature. Anyway, as you can tell in here, we have had an attack with uh, army worms. So if anyone doesn't know what that is, army worm is basically, um, it comes from a moth. So it's like the larvae from a, from a moth. Just like there's larvae from uh, 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 from flies, and that's a maggot in the form of maggots. Well, the larvae from um, moth, well, from certain moths, are actually a uh, army worm, and they come in and they just attack your grass, and they will just, uh, in some cases, they'll completely wipe out fields. Um, actually, lead, uh, they have actually led cows into starvation from that. Because, it, I mean, just in a few days, they can go in and just completely destroy the field. And you can kind of tell, I hope you can, the difference in the uh, height of the grass there. This has not been grazed. I just now let the cows in, and um, this has not been grazed down. This was actually here before. But it looks like a graze line, see? You can tell that right there, the difference in the grass there. And all it is, basically, is the army worm is coming in and grazing it. Well, so the what a lot of people will have to do is they'll come in and spray their fields with like a pesticide or something and in some cases it's actually necessary because you consider something like COVID-19 or something like that where the price of cattle was driven down so far uh, it actually got to where for a little short time there you couldn't even go sell cows okay so the point is is that if an army worm comes in and completely wipes out your field and they have nothing to eat you have no choice but to go in there and spray them and kill those army worms Otherwise, your cattle are going to be the one that's starving to death, okay? So in that specific case, there's there's nothing really you can do. you got to do what you got to do. It's kind of like um, kind of like if you get badly, badly sick, you've got to go to the hospital and you've got to go get an antibiotic and get it taken care of. Uh, but if you can take care of it on your own, then, then you do. You know, if you start getting a little sick, you start trying to take preventative met methods and have some vitamin C and try to get a little bit better on your own. But eventually, sometimes you do have to take uh, actions into your own hands and, and actually go to the hospital and get them to give you an antibiotic. Well, basically, that's the way I see sprays. Um, I try to see them more as a antibiotic, like as a, a medicine. Like if I have to do it, then then I will, because sometimes you do have to. Um, but for the most part, I have been, well, actually 100%, I've actually been able to stay completely away from it. Uh, thank goodness, cross my fingers there because I do prefer to stay off of the sprays if I can. Now, let me explain myself because a lot of people will argue with me on this. I try to stay away from them, uh, the pesticides especially, simply because even though they don't kill the earthworms, they have a huge effect on the lifespan of the earthworm and mostly they have an effect on the next generation. So the next generation ends up being smaller, sometimes half the size, and sometimes they only have about half the babies that they had before. So an earthworm can have up to, well, in their lifetime, there can be seven million more earthworms coming from that, that all came from that earthworm, um, descendants of some sort within that earthworm's lifetime. Well, that um, that is cut close to in half, if I, if I remember my numbers right, but it's cut dramatically down. Uh, so you can see how over time, it could have a huge effect on your earthworm population. <laughs> Uh, thus having a big causing big problems with your soil eventually okay so it's not something I want to sit there and just do all the time I, I don't want to lean on it there's a lot of people um, that I see that they really lean pretty heavily on it and it's because they are sold this they're, they're told that um, there's studies done that proves that they don't kill earthworms and that's true and stuff like that but they so they they don't give them the whole story okay so a lot of people they do it because they don't know the harm that's being caused okay but <clears throat> there is a big harm that is being caused by it like you can see just well i'll just go over here and show you this real quick you can see the difference in height and grass there like there's my hand there and then that grass goes way up there they're eating that down quite a bit there well anyway over time that's going to start to get to your um to your soil so basically what i wanted to touch on is that's the reason why i like diversity that's one reason why i really like diversity in my soil 
is because um, eventually, by having diversity, okay, you, you, you bring in another food source, basically. Now we're talking about food source for the predator. Okay, bear with me a little bit. I'm going off into a rabbit hole a little bit, but I'm gonna try to tie it back in if I can. Basically, what we're seeing here is two different types of grass in this case, okay? We've got like a common Bermuda here. Now there's all sorts of different um, varieties of this and I'm still learning a lot about it because we never had it in Texas. Um, so here in Louisiana, I'm still learning a lot about that kind of thing. And then we also have the Bahia grass. Now that's something I know quite a bit about because we had quite a lot of that there. Okay, well, a lot of people will down Bahia and they want their common Bermuda, okay? And they will actually go so far as to kill off everything but the common, okay? The problem that I'm seeing is that if you look at this line here, basically the army worms came through and ate the common and left the, uh, left the Bahia behind. And they also have left other, um, other types of grasses, even certain types of Bermuda that's a, that's a little bit of a different variety if I understand it right for, based on what someone else was telling me anyway the point is is there are different varieties of grass out here that have been left behind like you see all this bahia grass now that's come to seed but they've completely left it behind and they just went around it okay so what does that do for me now that my cattle are in here they because of plant diversity I actually have some food left for my cattle now I do have to watch and make sure that they don't overgraze all of this Okay, but the point is, is, is if I didn't have diversity in here, I would have a serious problem in here because the cattle, uh, excuse me, the army worms would have come in here and just ate everything that I had. Now you do see here, there is a lot of Bermuda left, but I've seen cases where they've come through and just stripped entire fields and they, but their, their favorite grass is the common. Okay. They love that stuff. So they'll go around other grasses to get to that. So the, the main point that I'm trying to drive home is um, that you want plant diversity out there, okay? Even though some grasses, like here, the grass that is really a good grass, I mean, it's a great grass. Uh, it seems to be, it seems to last way longer in the winter. The protein's better in the winter uh, than a lot of other grasses and things of that nature. And that's why I want more of it, but I don't want to get rid of my plant diversity because it's something, it's like an insurance to have that other stuff. You know, no one wants to pay for insurance, but at the end of the day, if you have that insurance, it can save you, okay? So anyway, just keep that in mind, guys, about plant diversity. I don't know what y'all battle in y'all's area. Um, for us, it's army worms. When I was in Texas, it was actually grasshoppers, um, and they didn't eat the grass down as bad but at the same time, they didn't seem, they, they weren't picky. They would go through and just eat all of it, um, no matter what the species was of it. So anyway, just keep that in mind. Uh, just remember the plant diversity is, is important, okay, for a lot of reasons. For me, it's important because I've still got food for my cattle, but also I've been able to go one more day without having to spray anything and, and, and kill off my earthworms, okay? I, like I said, I'm not against it. I just would rather not if I can help it because I know the good that I can get. And I'm already starting to see um, the earthworm population start to go up just a little bit because of the practices that I've been doing. Now, are there negatives to it? Um, yeah, I would say that there are some negatives to what I'm doing, the way I'm doing it. Slight negatives, okay? Some of the negatives, and I'm gonna put this in another video, uh, so just keep an eye on that stay tuned for that but some of the negatives are, are kind of like right now I'm seeing some more weeds than I would have because uh, I'm not putting out herbicides either I'm not spraying for my weeds okay I'm not saying that I'm against it okay if I have to I will but I'm gonna try to stay away from it as much as possible okay I just don't want to be married to it so the point is is because of that I am starting to see a few more weeds uh, like out in there you can see there's a weed over there, whereas normally if you sprayed it, you wouldn't see that as much. And then over in here, there's a few weeds. And over over in that area where the cows are right now, there's a few weeds across there, okay? But at the end of the day, it's not that bad. Now, I do have some pastures that are worse than that, okay? And those are worse. Weeds usually are, it's a manifestation of uh, something, a lack in your soil, okay? The good thing about weeds 
is they do mine minerals. They go down deep and they break up the soil down deep. So in the long run, they can help you. It is a battle though, and it is something you, you do have to battle. There are some cases where using some herbicides um, cautiously can be helpful, I think, and sometimes even necessary. So don't get, don't just take my word for it. You know, do your own research, do your own study, all like that. But the biggest thing is, is just don't get married to the, to the stuff. You know, the main thing is, is you can spend a lot of money on, on herbicides because somebody said that your pasture was ugly. But when in reality you drove out there and there was so much grass and it was more than you even needed. Okay. So just keep that in mind, guys, that at the end of the day, sometimes it's better to back off on your cows uh, a little bit just so that you you know you, you you don't quite make that top dollar you don't quite make as much money because you've um, you got a smaller herd than you used to okay but at the same time you end up making it all back and then having less work okay by not spending all this extra money on stuff that would be necessary if you had more cows so like i said those are all topics for other videos but just stay tuned for that the main uh point that i'm trying to drive home on this video is plant diversity very important it will save your pocketbook it will save your earthworms in this case uh and some of your microorganisms um, but it will also save your cattle and save you from being stressed out because i am very busy with um building our new our new home right now and shop and everything and i would have to actually come out here and spray all of this um if it wasn't for that and it's not something i want to do and plus i don't really like smelling the sprays if i'm putting them out you know so anyway guys just keep that in mind um you know so thanks everybody don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content